Hello everyone. In this lesson, we're about to cover how can we use geological mineral solvers to differentiate minerals. So we're going to study three examples. The first example is a is a reservoir we have clays, and we want to know what are the clays present. In this particular example, we have XRD uh, measurements, fine sections, and we have studied that uh, in great detail. In this song, we have we know that there are kaolinites. Kaolinite is a type of clay mineral not easy to detect. One of the properties of the kaolinites among the clay minerals, kaolinites are the ones that has the lowest response to gamma ray. Here you see kaolinite has a gamma ray response smaller than chloride and eyelite and, and smectite. This is quite interesting. So not, not only the gamma ray is a good solver for that. Let me show you in this example in, in, in this region, we have this, this curve here. This green curve is gamma ray. So we have gamma ray the values here is 26.6 and it's quite low, but we are sure that that is kaolinite because we, we have seen in the microscope and all this stuff. And here we have in the pink curve, that is the the B shell computed through the information between neutron porosity to density porosity. If you want to know what is the theory of that, you can you can consult our your website. Here we have an article of that. This is the question for that, and it has some explanation and some comparison against different uh, different measurements. So these are different techniques, and they match very well. If you don't have too many kaolinites. The B shell computed from gamma ray index and normalizer, whatever could be a good estimator, but not, not in all cases. In these cases, it didn't behave well. So you see here that this particular behavior, so in this particular case, the B shell was captured properly using the, the B shell estimate from neutron porosity to density porosity difference. In this track, we have the value for X RD, X ray diffraction. So we know th this is kaolinite. So you see, we have very low deflection for gamma ray and very large defle deflection from B-shell computed neutron minus density. Because the neutron porosity captures, measure the amount of hydrogen in the matrix. So that is why it's related to clay. Okay, so let's, let's see how con can do this. And here in the Rymos track, are the clay solver response. So you see, this is the XRD kaolinite, it matches here, at least qualitatively, at least to say yes or no, that is okay. For the rest of that, mostly the dominant clay, mineral clay, is a smectite and other minor minerals. So basically, here the clays are smectite and some regions, small regions, kaolinite, but they are tricky, they are difficult to pick. So let, let's go quickly to dark flow of that. This is the B shell from neutron density. The way to compute that, you specify the, the neutron porosity, the density porosity, a baseline for, for neutron porosity in pure shells, and the baseline on density porosity for pure shells. That's it. Your lawyer takes care of that. Okay, let's go to the mineral solvers. They go something like here. Quartz, seal, highlight, metallic, carbonate, and chloride. We have to specify one solver per each mineral. You will take care later on of, of to merge all the results. Let's open uh, one of that, the quartz. You put the mnemonic. You put the units, here should be volume divided by volume, and a, a short description. Okay, you go to mineral solvers and row M, you go to the equation, equation seven, and that's it. You have to specify B shell, the core number of B shell already computed, the core number of gamma ray. Why B shell and gamma ray? That is because B shell is not enough. So we have in shell, we have different magnitudes for gamma rays. 
per different mineral. So that's why. This is asking separated for B shell, gamma ray, the photoelectric factor, which is very nice, and volt density. Then you have some sort of the four parameters that if you have some to put correct, then will be better. So we need the seal proportion as a proportion of shell. Sealed. In a pure shell, we have silt and we have uh, clay minerals. So you have to type the pH value for a typical silt, the density of silt, the density of your fluid, you should be very close to 1.0, and the salinity of your formation and tolerance. That's tolerance. You tell your lawyer how accurate are your results. If you are very, very exigent, you put a value close to zero, you are asking for an exact solution. Seldom it can have an exact solution. Then, okay, once you put your parameters, basically you have four curves. Once you put that, you have to define your output. So quartz, sealed, halide, metallic, carbonate, and chloride. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Six minutes to solve. And that's it. Then you run that. You do the same for, for CELT. Question seven, exactly the same input boxes, but you put seal here and so forth. Highlight and so forth. And the next ones. And also esmectite and kaolinite. And that's it. You wrote your workflow and you make a plot and you have your results. These are the results. So we detect that we're very successful to detect the kaolinite. Let's go to a different mineral solver. This is a reservoir with carbonates. So here we have the carbonates. We have a, we have a lot of dolomite. They are the pinks. And we have a calcite. Those are the, the bluish color. And also we have some sums with quartz, this yellow. So we have the colors are here, green for clays, gray for silt, blue for calcite and pink for dolomites. And this is a mineral solver for that. The workflow. It's basically this one. This is a classical way to, to do that. You have to measure the temperature of your well. You need to specify the, the temperature of your surface. This is why I'm very cold. The temperature at the bottom measure with the thermometer of your, your well bore and the true vertical depth at the bottom to model that. Then you have to specify salinity. And once you specify salinity, the formation water resistivity RW depends upon salinity and temperature. And in this particular case, this is interesting. The salinity itself is not a constant, but a variable curve. We did that with the script. So we have uh, one value for one formation, and we have 13,000 and 4,000, completely different. So we have a variable salinity. Then we go to the mineral solver. We have many equations. Let's go to these ones. The yellow mineral solver for this carbonate can solve a lot of things. So it, it can solve the grain density, the clay proportion, the silt proportion, the quartz, limestone, dolomite, anhydrite, and salt. So let's go by grain density. You open that. You specify the mnemonic of the curve, the units, and a description. What is the question used? Is this one, the number one mineral solver. So this is quite simple. This is a special mineral solver for clay, silt, quartz, or chert. Those are silicon dioxide, calcite, limestone, dolomite, and hydrate, halite, and salt. Option one. You have to specify your B shell, the photoelectric factor curve. If you have that, that one, if you don't have, you have to use a different the mineral solver. And volt density, then are the four parameters, the pH value of the clay. You, you can also take a guide 
on these ones. You can take some parameter from here. This is rock properties. And fill that. We are asking that to produce the matrix density and, and estimate on that. Another parameter for, for the convergence, tolerance. What, how accurate is your solution? A bias. You need more calcite or more dolomite. In most of the mineral solvers, the, the solution is not fully determined. So you have some allowance to bias one result to another based on your experience. So you have some, you can go from minus one to suggest, suggest dolom more dolomite. Your lawyer uses a fuzzy logic equations and it blends with classical deterministic equation and other stuff. Or you can suggest more calcite. Also, there is a bias for B-shell. You can put zero to ask your lawyer to honor exactly the solution for the mineral solver. Or if you put one, you honor exactly your in input. So your lawyer needs to move slightly your B-shell. It needs to move several things and you, you have some, some allowance or some blending. So here I recommend 0 0.5. Then clay proportion is something like that, something like this. Clay proportion and so forth. Silt and quartz. These are the results. We have here a lot of carbonate with some clays. And here we have a complete different environment. Here we have basically quartz with some dolomitic spikes and some calcite cements, but these are not limestone. These are aeolian sands with some spikes of dolomite and calcite cements. There is an interesting run here with row matrix. We have here several measurements. In blue, we have row M computed by mineral sol solver, and we have in row M solved by the ROM M for the contrast between neutron porosity and density porosity, and they match very well. You see the red and the, the other color matches very well. So that means increases your confidence on the results. Okay, in a different example, we have here a shale oil reservoir. So what is interesting in this particular well is that we have a solution of mineral solvers. In this particular well, this reservoir, we have a measurements of X-ray diffraction, XRD. So we compare here our mineral solvers with the solution and we have a reasonable match. You see something like, like here, this yellow pond, then yellow filling is quartz. So we have a reasonable match. It is very difficult to get something better like that. Believe me, it's very difficult. Even here with, with clay, we have a very nice match. So we have calcite, we have quartz, and dolomite. We have very nice, very reasonable match, not a very nice match. This is the region with shale oil. Here, the mineral solver couldn't give the result. It happens all the time, so maybe it's complex. It, it didn't succeed. And we have here in bulk volumes, we have here an estimate of total organic content. And here you have the, this well, this log in your, your learn set, you will learn how to do that. There is a, something interesting in this particular well that this region, this song is very clean. However, this is interesting because we, we, only, we only could detect that, compute a clear, very clean gamma ray using the thorium, the thorium, radioactivity. So what we did use something like, like this. So we computed the index of shell using a baseline from clean rocks of thorium and a baseline of for pure shells. So these are curve itself. These, these are the core 191 and 192. Let's see. 191. The baseline for clean rocks is 1.5, and the baseline for shales is 13 units. So that is quite subtle. 
we use uh, in this shell and B shell using thorium. In this particular example, we, we were very lucky and we had spectral gamma rays. You, you don't always have that. But if you do with gamma rays, you will have problems. Another possibility is to use the B shell for neutron density to density porosity. That's another workaround. Okay, thank you very much. I think with this you have a, an idea how to use the mineral solver. Just test it. Basically, you do one, one function per mineral. Later on, you have uh, one curve per mineral. You choose the, the appropriate model. Thank you very much. Please like your videos. You really like it and share and subscribe to our channel. Have a very nice rest of the day. That's all for now.